there's Russian tanks have begun advancing towards the eastern Donbas region for a renewed offensive. As battle rages in the besieged city of Mariupol, Ukraine's Azov regiment say Russian drones have dropped chemicals, causing breathing problems and vertigo-like symptoms after a pro-Russian military spokesman threatened smoking out Ukrainian defenders of a major steel plant there. Today, the occupiers issued a new statement which testifies to their preparation for a new stage of terror against Ukraine and our defenders. One of the mouthpieces of the occupiers stated that they could use chemical weapons against the defenders of Mariupol. We take this as seriously as possible. I want to remind the world's leaders that the possible use of chemical weapons by the Russian military has already been discussed. Britain's foreign secretary seeks to verify the claims. She says Putin would be held to account for any callous escalation of this conflict. As the war approaches its eighth week, Ukraine's deputy prime minister claims more than 500 female Ukrainian civilians are in Russian prisons. They shave their heads, they check them every day, forcing them to undress and get naked. They humiliate their human dignity. I know facts of rape, I saw spines that had been beaten. So we have to act, we have to be strong and durable. We need to understand that the absolute evil is working against us. It's the evil that feeds on weakness. A mother's reaction as her son's body is recovered in front of her eyes close to Kyiv. Germany, the Netherlands and Sweden have pledged $2.7 million towards the International Criminal Court's ongoing investigation into possible war crimes in Ukraine. Russia has reportedly criticized it as partial, as alleged evidence mounts up. It's the direct impact of, of the violence. When Manuel was speaking to the Security Council, he told the story of a little boy, Vlad, four years old, who was shot in the stomach trying to flee with his family. I met children, one boy, 15, who lost his mother in a landmine accident. He was in the vehicle at the same time. Hundreds more small explosive devices are being discovered in residential areas, such as here in Kharkiv, landing as people sleep. In this relentless war, where the fighting never stops. Mark Lobel, BBC News. Let's go live to Ukraine and speak to Dan Johnson in Lviv. Um, Dan, how will the US, the UK and others try to confirm if chemical weapons have been used? And if they have, is that going to mean an escalation in the retaliation from the West? That is what was promised. If you remember, a few weeks ago, uh, President Joe Biden uh, said that if chemical weapons were used in this war, that that sort of use of deadly force would be met with the same level of aggression. Now, he didn't spell out exactly what he meant by that, but he did make it clear that that would be a major escalation, something that would be responded to by NATO nations. And it's clear that, that the US and the UK, alongside other countries, are taking this report seriously. Not confirmed at the moment, but the report is that something was dropped from a Russian drone yesterday over Mariupol, which left Ukrainian soldiers feeling dizzy. They had trouble breathing. Uh, they say that it was a poisonous substance of unknown origin. And there had already been warnings that that sort of thing may be in store as the Russians try to finally take Mariupol. This may be part of their strategy to complete uh, the takeover of that city, which has been besieged right since the start of the invasion. Uh, there's been strong resistance there, and the Ukrainians are saying that they still continue to defend the city, that it hasn't completely fallen. Now, how they'll actually gather the evidence to prove whether chemical weapons have been used or not is tricky. It's difficult because there is still intense fighting there, but there is drone footage and they'll have those eyewitness accounts from on the ground. It's just going to take a little bit of time, I think, to gather that evidence and assess how reliable it is and whether they are actually able to say definitively whether this was a chemical attack or not. And, and in terms of the civilians, is there any further possibility of civilians trying to escape 
these besieged areas, Mariupol, and of course the Donbass region, as we see the escalation in weaponry brought in by Russia. Yes, there are still some uh, attempts to get people out. It's been fraught with danger and complication. Time and time again, the evacuation effort has been interrupted by ceasefires not being respected, by shelling intensifying, and we know that Mariupol is being targeted once again. Also in Kharkiv as well, there's been renewed shelling overnight. 11 people died there. There are at least 14 in hospital. We know children were caught up in that attack. There have been these repeated warnings to people that even after the shelling and the air raid warnings end, these scatter munitions are being used increasingly in places like Kharkiv, which mean that as people return, they are liable to step on something that maybe doesn't even look like a weapon. That could cause further damage and further loss of life. That's why loudspeakers are warning people in those places to be very careful, even as they return, to see what's left of their homes. And in the areas the Russians have withdrawn from, there are mines still causing injuries. So the risks to life are clear and present right across the country. And the effort now really is to get as many people to safety as possible in the time that is left as more Russian military hardware comes into the east with the expectation that they will intensify the conflict there in hope of uh, forming that land bridge right round from Crimea to the eastern regions and to the northeast of Kharkiv, this sort of horseshoe round of the east uh, for the Russian forces who could then build from that position and perhaps move further west, possibly advancing on Kyiv from that other direction. Dan Johnson in Lviv, many thanks indeed. Reduced to darkness and death. Russia's troops now occupy the theatre that was bombed as hundreds sheltered. Their six-week siege of Mariupol has brought it to the brink of falling. State TV in Moscow showed these unverified pictures claiming they are Ukrainian soldiers surrendering. <laughs> But the city's defenders posted their own videos holed up in the port and a factory, still fighting, but their position seems desperate. We won't give up, says this Marine, but we're encircled with no resupply of ammunition or food. A hundred miles north, just over the Russian line, Europe's 21st century war is fought amid mud and rage in the trenches. Mariupol's capture could see a push north here. If Mariupol falls, what will happen here? Well, we won't let this place turn into Mariupol. They're holding on. Move, move, my little friend. Vitaly shows me their Soviet-era launchers. They also have brand new Western weapons, but they want more, with the war about to move to a decisive phase. So they're completely dug in here, as you can see. And the Russians are that way, about four, four or five miles from here, within artillery range. And you can see how they're ready for a long and grinding fight. They've been entrenched for 45 days. No, we're on our own land. We are on our own soil. We expect them to bury as many of them as possible. The more troops they send our way, the more fertile our land gets. Russia's siege has killed thousands of civilians in Mariupol and unleashed an appalling struggle for survival for residents that remain. And these are the children of President Putin's war. This hospital, north of the front line, is taking patients from Mariupol and, like those in this ward, from elsewhere in the south and east. The doctors tell me they're treating children with injuries they usually see in soldiers straight from the battlefield. For Mariupol's survivors, whole lives are packed into a few bags and they carry the fresh horrors of this war. Lena and Timothy are homeless, their apartment block obliterated in an airstrike Ukraine's leaders called Mariupol the heart of their war effort, but they fear soon it could stop beating. Tom Bateman, BBC News, Zaporizhia, in southeast Ukraine.